Hello and welcome. This is Benam and in this video I would like to talk to you about how we can use real world data to create the efficient frontier line. So basically what I want you to achieve is the efficient frontier line as discussed by Harry Markowitz in his paper Portfolio Selection. If you go to page number 80 of this document and 81 you will see the formulas are here but then the simplified version of the formula for your easy learning is what I will be using in order to construct the efficient frontier line. So what you need to do first thing is this is going to be the efficient frontier line in the case of two stocks so the portfolio consists of two stocks so you want to therefore download the data for two stocks you can go to yahoo and type in apple and download the data for apple just by clicking historical data and over here you can take the maximum and then you can select monthly uh, and then download the data and do the same for another company and what i have done in this case is i've done it for citigroup okay so i've got stock price for apple and stock price for citigroup from i've selected this period but uh, the data i received from yahoo finance was from 1st of january 1985 monthly all the way to january 2021 so that's that's good uh, good length of data for me to for me to compute so what i therefore need to do first thing is to compute the return so new share price divided by old share price take away one gives me the return that's what i have done for both my stocks i've double clicked it and in case of return i'm interested in geometric return so i click equal product and then one plus all these return and i can see there are 432 so power one over four three two months i have takeaway one and that gives me the returns monthly for apple and just copy and paste i get the returns for citigroup as well now for a standard deviation i just type in stdv.s open bracket i take the standard deviation of my monthly return for apple and i just copy and paste it here i get that for citigroup as well next this is what i need because as i said to you here now i'm going to use the formula and in order to compute the variance given by sigma square p variance of the portfolio i need weight standard deviation and also the correlation which is given by row one two here this bit so here therefore i will be finding correlation correlation in diagonal is one and here equal correl is the function i can apply and therefore i will choose uh, select this array and the other array which will be for city group hit close bracket hit enter because that correlation matrix are symmetrical i can take this here so my correlation matrix is also done now this is my weight of investment in apple so weight of investment in apple so i'm saying no investment here i'm saying 10 percent. so here if i'm not investing it should be equal to 100 percent. so one minus this is what i can do and therefore here i need 90 percent. so that's what i'm getting so bring it down so that at the end i've got zero percent for city group here i need weight one square sigma one square exactly like the formula here so therefore i will need to square this times square the standard deviation and also remember i need to lock this so that i get i can drag it down so that turned out to be zero and now weight two square and uh, i need to do square times the sigma 2 square which is here again i need to lock this so it is going to be locked simply by pressing uh, f4 or function and f4 depends on the keyboard and then i have equal two times weight one remember weights i don't need to lock 
it's just this with one with two and then a standard deviation one which i need to lock times a standard deviation two which i need to lock again and then i need the correlation which is the number here i'm going to lock it as well as you can see i have captured exactly this in my uh, calculation here two double one double two okay i put a row afterwards correlation afterward but it doesn't matter i put sigma one sigma two first and then correlation in the end but it doesn't matter so I have completed this what I also need to do additionally as you can see in the formula I need to plus plus means I need to add them all together so here I am going to add them all together these three items so that I get the variance of the portfolio this bit here so I've got the variance now I just need to square root because standard deviation is the square root of the variance and I get it here so that's my portfolio risk when I have zero investment in apple but uh, that's correct isn't it and this number here is what i'm getting and this is equal to this number as well as you can see because i made no investment in apple first but then i can double click and i get something like this for the remainder okay now so i've got the risk i now need the return return as you can see is easy that's weight times rate so this is what i need to do because there are two stocks so i would now therefore do weight of investments times uh, rate of return from apple plus weight of investment in second times rate of return from city so that's what i get now i just need to remember that i need to lock the rate of return which are these uh, root two values that's what i have just done i will double click or just drag it down and i get it so now in order to compute the graph i just need to highlight insert xy diagram and i can take this so you see this is my efficient frontier line that i have just made I can change it to the name efficient portfolio frontier or efficient frontier line and this side here uh, is my risk and here uh, on the vertical is my return now next thing that i want to talk about quickly is where is my minimum variance point what weight of investment do i need to make in order to get the minimum or least risk so over here what we're saying is we want to find that risk which is the lowest okay so you can see here and make some guess maybe 924 here is the lowest and this is telling you 40 percent investment in apple 60 percent in in a city group but if you want to find out the exact re exact ratio of investment then in excel what you can do is you can apply the solver function in side data so if you have solver here what you can do is first copy this all paste it down and then once you have pasted it what you can do is ask the computer to make it a minimum by changing your weight here so go to data click solver click here and tell the computer this should be your risk lowest which is this point and then you want to minimize that's fine and over here it's the point that you want to cho change is this one so once you have done this now simply going to click solve and that way you will get the new weights here which is what you need to invest in apple and, and in city group that will give you the lowest variance okay so let's see so you say okay so you see this was this has now changed to 43 and 56 percent so if we were just to guess we would have received 40 and 60 but to be 100 percent precise it is telling you 43.41 percent in apple and 56 points uh 6 56.6 56.59 in city group so if you want to have that incorporated here that's something you can do but by guess you can think that the minimum variance should be here but if you want to have it in the diagram then you should 
you sh you can do that by saying minimum variance point you want to add and that series x value is this and series y value is your return and then uh, that's it you see the 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 orange spot here is telling you the minimum variance point now if you see the diagram here uh, i've told you that the the efficient frontier line below minimum variance point is inefficient the reason why it is inefficient is because you see you can draw a line something like this uh, let's say and you can easily see that um, in this line um, uh, if you are here you are taking certain level of risk or let me take it here okay where you have let's say exactly um, um, 10 percent risk so you have this 10 percent risk here and the return here is uh, not point four not 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 four okay or not point four percent but but at the same 10 percent risk you can see you can go all the way here which can give you um, a very high return um, so these points below the minimum variance are therefore on the line are inefficient okay but uh, um, if we're talking about the points in the line these are going to be more efficient because for the same level of risk they give you higher rate of return of course um, everything inside this line which you also call the envelope line are feasible set but compared to any points inside this line the point on the line itself are superior are much preferable okay so this is what i wanted to achieve in terms of efficient frontier line of course you can talk more and you may like to see my other videos in relation to uh, aspects such as capital market line which is a line that is going to be tangent on the efficient frontier something like this but that will be an agenda in the next video but thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for listening to me and i end my discussion here thank you